the unusual. So I'm presenting Mr. P, who is a 39-year-old gentleman from Tirupur, who is working as a tailor, presented with fever for a day, headache for three days, altered sensorium for three days, and right lower limb swelling for three days. History of the presenting complaint is fever. It was a high-grade fever with chills and rigors, which subsided on paracetamol, and it was there only for a day. Um, headache, which was hollow cranial, moderate in intensity, which was continuous for three days followed by altered sensorium in the form of agitation, decreased uh, verbal output, and unable to recognize his relatives. Right, right lower limb uh, swelling, which preceded the, preceded the event, it was in serious onset, gradually progressing, extending from knee to ankle, um, sparing as per the history, not associated with pain redness or any blisters or peripheral discoloration, and uh, for which he was given oral steroids in an outside hospital. Um, there was no history of vomiting, loss of consciousness, blurring of vision, weakness of limb, de uh, deviation of mouth or seizures. There was no history of recent ear infection. There was no history of any IV drug abuse or uh, recent history of travel. No history of chronic cough, <coughs> altered bowel habits, lower uh, urinary tract symptoms, no history of trauma. And there was no significant past history, no history of connective tissue diseases. Um, uh, personal history wise, he was a chronic ethanol consumer as well as smoker for the past 10 years. Examination-wise, his pulse rate was 110 per minute regular, blood pressure was 100 over 60, respiratory was 24, and he was uh, afebrile with a temperature of 102. He was maintaining saturation of 96% on room air. There was no obvious rash or eschar on uh, general examination. Um, he had a right-sided, uh, his right-sided lower limb, there was warm redness, however, there was no tenderness. Um, no, there was no paralytic cyanosis, clapping or lymphadenopathy. I would uh, central nervous system examination. His uh, GCS at time of presentation was E2, E1, M5. Um, cranial nerve examination, bilateral pupils were reacting to light. There was no papillary edema. There was gaze preference to the left side, tall side, and there was no facial deviation or any gag present. Uh, gag was not assessed. Uh, Morto could not be assessed at the time because he was agitated. However, he was moving all four limbs with, uh, uh, on painful stimulus, uh, uh, stimulation. Tone was hypertonic in all four limbs. Reflexes were two plus and uh, plantars were bilaterally flexors. Sensory and cerebellum were not, was not able to assess at that point of time. He also had neck stiffness and rest of the system examination was normal. Um, so, in the background, uh, summarizing as a 39-year-old gentleman with uh, history of fever, headache, altered sensorium, uh, followed by, um, as well as uh, on examination, having uh, on examination febrile with uh, neck stiffness. So, our uh, uh, symptom complex was suggestive of uh, acute meningoencephalitis. So, the differentials we considered for the uh, same was pneumococcal, meningococcal, or a hemophilus listeria, or a viral, uh, viral encephalitis, which could be HS, HSV, varicella, Japanese, or enterovirus. It could be a metabolic encephalopathy or a sepsis induced, sepsis with a septic encephalopathy. Uh, so, moving on to the in, uh, investigations, uh, blood picture showed a hemoglobin of 14.4 with a normal red cell indices. Uh, total counts was 31,000 with uh, left shift myelo metamylocytes of 5, neutrophils of 81, and lymphocytes of 6. Platelets were uh, 2,18,000. There was mild derangement of his uh, renal function. Kiriat was 1.15 with the urea of uh, 76, as well as there was this electrolytemia. LFD was deranged as well with uh, mild indirect hyper, uh, direct hyperbilirubinemia, transaminitis. CRP as well was elevated. Blood culture had grown beta hemolytic streptococci, which was uh, pan sensitive. Um, and the CSF study had shown total counts of 540 with 250 uh, RBCs. Um, it was uh, neutrophil predominant, glucose of 57 and protein of 150. The biofilm uh, array, uh, biofilm, uh, array had shown uh, strepto, streptococcus agalactae, expert MZ and bacterial cultures were negative. MRI was suggestive of a uh, few focal chiral subcortical expansion, suggestive of encephalitis as well as uh, flare signal hyper signal changes suggestive of a meningeal disease. Um, so um, B his uh, BBS was negative, blood-borne virus screening was negative, uh, 
three month HbA1c was uh, 5.4, which was again within the normal limit. Syphilis screening was negative because we pre uh, presented with the acute febrile uh, illness, uh, acute febrile period. We also ruled out a, a probable dengue scrub and malaria. And uh, because he had a hepatitis, uh, ultrasound was also done, which, which was normal. Um, so during the admission on day seven, he was noted to have this swelling in the right knee, which progressively worsened. An ultrasound screening showed a infective arthritis with uh, intermuscular extension to popliteus and gastronemus. MRI showed an infective etiology, infective arthritis, but uh, there was no osteomyelitis. So joint aspiration was done and it showed a total counts of 78,000 with uh, uh, 78,000 WBCs uh, with 99% uh, of neutrophils. There were no crystals. Bacterial culture growth, however, uh, did not show any growth, but he, he had received uh, more than a week of antibiotics by the time we performed the uh, joint uh, aspiration. Since, uh, uh, since there was uh, uh, joint uh, infection, there was a uh, joint washout was also done. Um, uh, the histopath uh, showed a pyogenic in inflammation. However, all the cultures were negative. Um, so our final diagnosis was uh, streptococcal B bacteremia. Um, etiology being uh, the organism being Streptococcus galactae with acute pyogenic meningoencephalitis, right knee septic arthritis, acute liver injury and a kidney injury both were resolved. Um, so I'm gonna uh, talk a bit about Streptococcus galactae. It is an encapsulated gram positive organism which is a hemo uh, beta hemolytic which produces a narrow, uh, narrow zone of hemolysis from sheep blood agar. So it is a major cause of meningitis in neonates and children younger than three years old. So usually neonates get their infection by vertical transmission. It does cause infections in adults, pregnant and non-pregnant. In pregnant ladies, it's usually from a UTI or a chorioamnionitis. Whereas in, uh, uh, in non-pregnant ladies, uh, sorry, uh, non-pregnant adults, it is the most common cause of a bacteremia without a focus. And um, if you look at the percentage, it's the most common infection um, uh, that a uh, beta hemolytic streptococcus causes a uh, soft and skin tissue infection, which come uh, about 50 to 40 percent, uh, whereas cellulitis will be the most common manifestation. Um, UTI accompanies to about uh, 5 to 15. Uh, lower urinary tract symptoms about 6 to 12. Bone and uh, joint infection about 5 to 15. Endocarditis about two to nine, and uh, meningitis about uh, and uh, meningitis meningitis about four percent, and um, so um, they produce a lot of uh, extra cellular substances which help them in uh, which which are part of their virulence, and the uh, one particular virulence called uh, pilin is responsible, which acts as an adhesin, which promotes the uh, promote uh, 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 central nervous system entry and it enhances the biofilm formation. So it is a meningitis is uh, like I said it is an uncommon uh, uncommon to have a meningitis a galactyl meningitis and it is uh, uh, accounts only for about four percent. However, it is a very the mortality rate is about twenty to uh, twenty seven to thirty four percent and it uh, usually progresses very rapidly. Hence. Within 40, uh, 24 hours of symptom onset, we should try, uh, start treating them. And uh, again, it is usually more commonly seen in individuals who are immunocompromised, who have uh, 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 chronic illnesses like diabetes, liver cirrhosis, renal failure, etc. Um, so these are a uh, few case reports with uh, uh, meningitis by streptococci from 2001. The one is from India till, uh, from 2022. So these are multiple. The uh, These all case reports uh, had isolated streptococcus galactae from the CSF and uh, all of it were pan-sensitive. Uh, so but coming back to our patient, uh, our patient, we had initially, we had started on meningitic doses, subtrax and vancomycin, acyclovetexa. However, uh, after the sensitivity, we uh, we, had we tapered it to ceftriaxone because there was a, a joint disease. We have planned for ceftriaxone for six weeks.
Oh, thank you. Why did you say it's a, your topic says it's an unusual? So what is unusual here? Um, it is you. One one thing is it is usually um. Uh, it usually affects uh, immunocompromised people. Literature per se, uh, there aren't many uh, literature reviews of uh, healthy individual getting uh, streptococcus. So what is the usual thing. organism you expected an adult then? Uh, when usually we don't get an isolate. Sorry? Usually we don't. Uh, so what streptococcus cause meningitis in adults, immunocompetent adults? Uh, meningococcus. Meningococcus. Uh, meningococcus. Uh, pneumococcus. But, but that is an nice. So what streptococcus? It's streptococcus pneumonia is very common, no? Rather than you can either have uh, pneumonia or meningitis or bacteremia. But uh, yes, as you said, it's very unusual to see agalexia beta. It's a group B beta hemolytic group which is very common with your neonates as you said it's a vertical transmission so how you treated uh, with the uh, subtraction for six weeks here any questions from the audience was an echo done to look yeah yeah yes yes echo was done i didn't mention it we did the uh, transesophageal as well as a transthoracic as well as a transesophageal which did not show any vegetations you said to begin with the patient had a three weeks history of leg pain, no? Three Even days. before fever, so three days. Three days, yeah. So is, was it like a cellulitis? Because at your end of your things, you said it's only right knee, like septic arthritis. But to begin with, was there a lower, because you described as a lower limb, uh, like pain, uh, things and all. Was, was there a cellulitis to begin with? Um, or else it's all just part of... Uh, early septic arthritis that's what you're trying to say um there was he had a swelling however he did not uh, complain of any pain there was no redness is what the relative said um once he became uh, no in, on your examination was there cellulitis or not or it's just a septic arthritis it was septic arthritis no cellulitis okay well, this CSF culture, did it grow? Because you said only its biofilm array showed. Yeah, biofilm array. CSF culture did not show. Sir. It didn't grow. Yeah. And cells also not very high. No, It's 200 it's, plus yeah. odd cells. Not very high, unlike things. I thought this, but still, he had a feature suggestive of uh, meningoencephalitis yes, 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 in the yes. imaging. But it's only from PCR testing you have got it. Can you, you want to give how long you want to treat this patient? So because there is joint involvement, we are treating for six weeks. Sir. That's what the Six weeks with them as well. Uh, ceftriaxone, two gram. Can you de-escalate, like you want to give six weeks ceftriaxone in hospital? No, we, we have discharged him, taking it uh, locally. On OPD basis, injection ceftriaxone. Okay, thank you. I think uh, among these five, I think uh, the best presentation goes to Ro Dr. Rohit Sujin for, for presenting the case, change the track for his medical That's it. Thank you.